Okay, y'all, you know the deal. We are in this period of time on my channel right now where we're doing a bunch of urgent reviews kind of separated into one product at a time per video. And today we're going to be focusing on the new Natasha Denona I Need a Warm Palette. So we're going to pull out the I Need a Nude Palette as well as the Gold Palette. We're gonna kind of compare not every single swatch, obviously, but the highlights, the high points, right? But the main reason that we wanted to talk about this on my channel, the reason that I was encouraged strongly by everyone to buy this, even though I kind of knew exactly how it was going to be, which is great. The reason that people wanted me to buy it is because it's basically a whole palette of bedroomized browns. <laughs> Matching essentially like your hair color in like a sparkle, right? <laughs> like it just trying to find the undertone of brown that would work best for you or even black and then having it have this like glisten to it. And that to me is a bedroomized brown. So like I'm going into this with very specific expectations, but it is also a reflection of the expectations of the people watching my channel. Like if you're new here and this is the first review that you're watching from me, that's the context or the lens we're kind of looking at this through is like this brown that like becomes that sexy instant smoky eye. At least that's the idea. I was going to put together my own bedroom eyes, brown bedroom eyes, Bambi palette, like a custom palette of all the things that I would put into a palette kind of thing, but that's going to take more than Natasha Denona. So I'm going to do that in a future video, probably in the face swatching video. Either way, I have both of them out here and we're going to do an eye look using these and I'm going to give you all my final thoughts at the end. So let's go ahead and jump in. So I'm wearing the Patrick Ta foundation. If you didn't watch that video, we are in the middle of kind of the dry down right now, but that's the only thing that I have on my skin right now. And so you can go and watch that video for all of my thoughts. Here she is, Natusha Denunu, Natasha Denana, Natisha Denini, apples and bananas. So this is the I Need a Warm palette. And I haven't watched anybody's reviews on this because I wanted to formulate my own thoughts, but I have seen the titles of some videos of other creators that I follow. And they're saying things like, warm in quotation marks, because I think people think that this is kind of neutral, you know, across the board. I think that they were expecting like fall tones, like old school uh, 35 O palette from Morphe, you know? And I do want to remind everyone that Natasha Nona's eyeshadows in particular look different on the skin than they do in the pan. They really, really transform. The textures are kind of hard to predict when you're just looking at them in the pan. And I do think that it is warm without going all the way to the golden palette because the gold palette again it's like when you have everything kind of sitting next to the shades the shades the color of like the outer pan that she's chosen and the design of the palette like these don't look like they're that warm but they're all very warm like we have all these gorgeous golds and like nothing really goes brown enough for me in this palette with the exception of maybe this one, Varys. And so we're not talking about gold being a gold mine, as it were, for uh, bedroomized brown shades the way that I was hoping for. So when we go into I Need a Nude, you know, these are some bedroomized Bambi shades for sure. This is very much, I would consider a, like a bridal palette, you know, because it's just that sort of like soft, decidedly feminine kind of color profile. And they're very, very pretty. These are Bedroomized Bambi, which is kind of the cooler, less saturated version of what I'm talking about, right? And they're just absolutely gorgeous. I Need a Nude is a freaking gorgeous palette, but it does go neutral to cool, right? We're not talking about anything, again, going autumnal here. And when we're talking about warm, I Need a Warm, we're talking about like warm, relatively speaking, a lot of times when I'm thinking of a makeup artist saying, I need a warm tone, it's usually just in order to make something kind of pop. It doesn't have to be orange to be warm. And I do appreciate that even if you need a warm, she wants to include something that isn't just crazy, crazy warm in here because she doesn't want you to have to pull out more than one palette because you do need both warm and cool in a look, relatively speaking. So while that is not the coolest brown in the world, it's cool by comparison to the things that are in this palette, and I find it to be balanced in that sense. Now, I do find myself a little tiny bit disappointed by how few quote unquote bedroomized browns there are in here. Like, I really want someone to just have the guts to put only shades like that in a palette, you know? I want you to just be able to explore all the depths 
<laughs> and all of the shades of what you can get out of like matching essentially like your hair color in like a sparkle, right? <laughs> like it just trying to find the undertone of brown that would work best for you or even black and then having it have this like glisten to it. And that to me is a bedroomized brown. So like I'm going into this with very specific expectations, but it is also a reflection of the expectations of the people watching my channel. Like if you're new here and this is the first review that you're watching from me, that's the context or the lens we're kind of looking at this through is like this brown that like becomes that sexy instant smoky eye. And we have a few of them. That was Hanker, Dynamism, and Flashover. I will say Flashover right here, I think is one of my favorite shades that maybe she's ever done. It's a really unique texture. I'm not sure if this is a new formula, but it's really blurring and soft and gorgeous. It looks a little bit iridescent in the pan, but it is just really ridiculously blurring. Flashover, whatever that formula is, reminds me of the Lisa Eldridge formula. It's just got that silicone -y grip that's like wildly smoothing. I'm very pleased with that. We have, I think probably, you know, there are a lot of people who have these shades committed to memory that are like diehard, lifelong Natasha Denona fans. I don't have that much of a catalog in my head of like whether some of these are repeats, but the mattes are always going to show up more saturated than you think. Like they are literal. Like that's not something where you're looking at the color and it's gonna go on softer or it's going to go on lighter or whatever. It's like, no, that is like paint, okay? They're very, very solid. And that's something that is kind of, I think the only thing that can be unapproachable about a Natasha Denona eyeshadow formula is how literal <laughs> her mattes are. But that's why I have really grown to love using a natural bristle brush with her eyeshadows because I feel like that's just what they're meant to be used with. So I will use like my refer brushes today. So I do have a long and storied history on my channel of stumbling through. This is Mellow, a Natasha Denona palette, because I was not prepared at all in the beginning of my channel back in 2018. I was not at all prepared for the professional nature, which can be a little bit unforgiving of this formula. But as you can see, A, I would like to think my skills have come some distance since then, but mainly using a natural bristle brush is so much less frustrating with these mattes. They just blend and kind of pick back up onto the brush in a really nice way, which is kind of what you need. Otherwise they stamp and then they won't move if you use a synthetic brush with them is my experience. And that was what was always so frustrating because I felt like it was really unforgiving. I couldn't get them in the wrong place by accident and then go back in and fix something. They were just stuck there. And I really feel like the natural bristle brushes make all the difference in the world. So still going with Mellow, just kind of laying down the general shape here of like the shadow I'm gonna create. And I am going to focus on what I would consider to be the most bedroomized brown shades in this. So we're mainly gonna work on this bottom row right here, but I love like Soft Spot and Vim too. So I'm actually gonna go in with Soft Spot in the outer corner. I do like this though, because the way that her mattes are so literal, like I said, something like Pep really makes it so that this palette works on a lot of skin tones. We don't have a white, which is, you know, fine with me, but we do have like a very, very, I just dipped my brush in it like an idiot. We have a very deep brown in there as well. So between Vim and Pep, I feel like you can get a lot of looks on a lot of different skin tones and you would hope so, right? Because she is, you know, a makeup artist. We would hope that a makeup artist knows that everyone needs to be able to get use out of something, especially with 15 shades in it. And I do, I'm like allowing myself to be a little bit sloppier with this because I do have the luxury of these brushes like moving things around after the fact. I, I used to be a nervous wreck with a Natasha Denona palette, my God. I mean, there were several videos back in the day where I just washed it off and started over. I was like, I have officially had my you know what kicked by this palette. That was the 15, this is the 14 from Refer. And I am going to go in with Flashover right here. I really, really like this color. I want like an entire palette of just this formula. I think this is the only one of this formula in the entire palette. So it's just very, 
very ideal. Like the color, the formula together, they just work so beautifully. And I love anything, anything that I put on my eyes that is gonna like smooth my skin out. And look at just that nice saturated depth that it's giving. So it's like a believable shadow. So if you're new here and you haven't heard, you know, my typical spiel on color theory, we're talking about things being warm and cool or relatively so. And nothing is completely cool. Nothing is completely warm. I mean, you could argue orange is always warm, but my point is, there is still a cooler orange and a warmer orange. Like you can still desaturate something to change the temperature, things like that. And so for the purposes of makeup, it is more about keeping in mind where you're trying to create shadow and where you're trying to create, you know, something coming towards you, shadow versus light. And I'm going back in with Mellow to just kind of clean up around here. The idea being that something cooler by comparison is going to make something look like it's receding from the eye and something warmer by comparison is going to make it look like it's coming towards you. And so you can use those illusions to your advantage to either accentuate what you already have going on, enhance it, do whatever you want. You know, once you kind of master the ability to manipulate shadow and light, you can do pretty much anything. And so I like that this doesn't just have, I ended up with a little bit of glitter by accident. This doesn't just have a nice kind of relatively cool brown to it, but also it absorbs light. It's just so silky matte. So it really gives a believable illusion of a shadow. And I use that to make my eyes look bigger and farther apart. That is what my journey is. That doesn't have to be your journey. That's my journey. Using Mellow here. Now Mellow is not a particularly light shade and it is the lightest shade in the palette until you get into the shimmers. So I'm going to grab a little bit of Fair right here from I Need a Nude and just clean up. You can do that with your face powder too, but I'm really trying to avoid putting face powder on right now because I'm also trying this foundation. Now comes the fun part. I'm going to stick my fingers in some colors and see what we think. So here are the shimmers, right? That's Homey, Hanker, Dynamism, Snug. Here's Phenomena, which I love a good oil slick color. Here's Fancy, Elm, which actually they're not that shimmery, which is nice. So it's like I can use those as highlight shades without it going glittery. And then this is Push. So they're warm. They're not bedroomized brown. They're warm. Okay, at least compared to my skin tone and I am neutral. So I'm going to, like I said, focus on that bottom row, which is like these three. You know, I use shades like this all the time. I love, like I said, an oil slick shade and it has a very specific look to it. I'm also going to use, you know, these on the inner corners, but we're really not gonna go here or, or here just because I feel like you can only do so much, right? So I'm gonna start with Hanker because I feel like that one has, you know, the least shimmer to it. And I really think that it's also the most bedroomized brown in the whole palette, but it still has some shimmer, but that's what I'm talking about. That to me is bedroomized brown on me. It has that slight bronzy gold shift to it, but a little bit of green. So it goes with my hair and it is the right saturation value to give me kind of that soft sleepy eyed look without looking really really dramatic and that's going to depend on everybody's skin tone what you can get away with that's why i want to make a bedroomized brown palette is because i want to make something that is exciting for everyone so the rest of this is kind of orange by comparison to that so i think that Let's see, homey. Homey is quite pink. So I'm gonna maybe go for like push or snug here. So we're actually going off of what I said I was going to do just because I'm, it's unexpectedly more bronze than, than that orange. So I think it's push. I think it might be both. <laughs> I think it just might be both. Okay, so we're gonna go push. Yeah, I just put it on kind of like the eye line, the, the lash line, I mean. And that's gonna kind of borrow a little bit of that color from the outer portion there. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of snug, and that's a little bit lighter of a version of that color. But is this, you know, incredibly satisfying? And like, do I feel like regardless of what I do, it's going to be gorgeous mud? Yeah, I'm just, 
I'm sad that we're not getting dynamism on there. So let's do that one right in the middle. Not that it freaking matters, but dynamism is so pretty. Yeah, and we're still ending up with something that's kind of like green on the lids and red back there, which is very interesting. And I mean, if you're not seeing the green, I apologize. My eyes are either extraordinary or broken. So however you want to look at it. We're going to start here with Elm and I'm going to put that on the inner corner. Get that brightness. We're really going like, you know, full glam here. You do not have to. I just want to show you all as much as I can. And then we'll go underneath the eye with push. Give you that sparkle. Very, very pretty. I'm going to take this same brush because it's so tiny and I'm just gonna dip so softly into pep here, that very, very deep shade and work it into the very outer corner there and get, whoopsies, the very deepest shadow. But I'm being careful to do that because I am working with a synthetic brush and so we are playing with fire. So I get the placement and then I'll go back in with the 14 and work it around. I'm dead serious that like a synthetic brush will make you look like a fool with these formulas, at least in my experience. They make me look like a fool. A little bit of vim, a little bit of soft spot, blendy blendy. I mean, really like it's a very intuitive palette. I think that's what I like about this. And what I like about a lot of her palettes is that like, as I am navigating my way through, I can get into a flow state because I don't have to think too hard because the colors I'm looking for are there, like the next intuitive shade is there kind of thing. That sets it apart from a lot of other palettes to me where I'm going, uh, is it, I don't know, you know? And so that still has that. And honestly, maybe even more than the gold palette. I feel like the I Need a Warm palette is what I was hoping for when I went into the gold palette, so. It's good that I have all of them to compare. All right, I'm gonna use just a little bit of RMS powder, clean up around this, and then I'm going to, come back with all of my makeup finished and we will discuss final thoughts here. I'll be right back, full beat. All right, makeup is on and the question becomes, do you need a warm at $69? Do you have a neutral skin tone? Do you have a warm skin tone? Was I need a nude too cool for you? Like this is everything that you think that it is. It is warm and it is Natasha Denona, but from the standpoint of bedroom eyes browns, it is not, I know, palettes are so funny because you kind of absorb them all at once. And it's hard to kind of like pick out each one. It's just sort of like the cheerleader effect. I think that really there's only like three shades in here that I would even consider to be bedroom eyes browns and only two of them have shimmer. The shade Flashover, I need, a ton of that formula, but also it is very, very extraordinarily similar to Lisa Eldridge's formula. And Lisa Eldridge did send me the new palette. So I have the new palette and the liquid eyeshadows. I'll be reviewing those for you soon, but I didn't have them yet when I was filming this. I don't think that this is some kind of like run, do not walk situation because you want a bunch of beautiful browns, okay? Like she needs to put out an, I need a brown palette, okay? I need a bedroom eyes brown palette. Call me, Natasha. Call me. But anyway, yeah, I mean, other than that, it's very straightforward as a Natasha Denona palette, and it is squarely in between this one, the I Need a Nude palette, and the Golden palette, you know? Golden is even warmer. And so I feel like this is a very approachable set of warm tones. And like I said, since she's a makeup artist, she's not like, here, buy all of my warm tones and then buy all of my cool tones. I think that's where Makeup by Mario kind of lost us on his matte palettes was like, not everybody just wants to wear all one temperature. The whole idea is to be able to put different temperatures next to each other to achieve illusions. You know, I don't think in like, I'm going to wear all grays and blues today. I think of, I'm going to put a cooler brown next to a warm warmer brown in order to enhance the shadow of the crease of my eye kind of thing. And I feel like that's built into this. I think that's probably why it's getting a little bit of criticism about not being warm enough is because she did include some cool er tones in here by comparison. But it's like, if I were to take what I would consider to be the coolest tone in here, which is Vim, I wanna see how it compares to like the warmest brown in I Need a Nude, which there isn't one. Look, there like literally isn't one. Like Silhouette is too dark to really be considered 
a comparable brown, right? So it's like tender maybe? I mean, good grief, it's so much warmer than that. And then you have the golden palette. Let's take like the warmest shade from that, you know, and it's still golden by comparison. I feel like she's done the math on these, right? I feel like these are not just throwaway palettes. She has really borne in mind, it's kind of like when you're listening to something and there's like a chord progression and they complete the chord even though you can't hear the note kind of thing, but the theory is there because the person knows what they're doing. Like, I feel like the theory is there. You're looking at the browns, right? The most a representative browns of the three palettes and you have one that's very cool, one that is warmer, and then one that's gold, okay? It's exactly what she said that it is. So I think it's a great palette. It's probably the one that I'm gonna end up using the most out of the three, just because I'm neutral and I feel like it goes really well with a neutral undertone. So it's what I like to wear. I'm glad that I got it. Thank you for pushing me to get it. And um, you know, just like 2018, here I am. I'm just collecting Natasha Denona palettes again, but this time I at least know how to use them. So I hope this is helpful for y'all. You know, I'm not gonna be exuberant about it. It's still a Natasha Denona palette. Like it's just a lovely thing. I think that they are, at the end of the day, weirdly well-priced now, since Natasha Denona used to be one of the most like high-priced eyeshadow palettes you could buy because they used to be $125. She shrunk them down. I think that they're extremely useful. And as everyone else keeps shrinkflating everything, her palettes have become oddly reasonable. So I think it's a lovely buy. I'm glad that I got it. And I'm going to, like I said, travel wise and things like that, it's probably going to be one of the ones I use the most. So that's just how I feel about it. If this was helpful, please give the video a thumbs up y'all. If you're new here, this is not typically what we do. We don't typically just kind of run through things, but if y'all like it, let me know. Usually I'm a little longer winded, a little more chaotic, but you know, I try and make things as useful as possible. So if that sounds good to you, please subscribe while you are here. I'll put a video up here that I think you'll enjoy if you liked this one. I love y'all very, very much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.